with a gill look on the side, you know, a, a kind of a combination that was mutated, which I think that's what evolution is, kind of a mutation process. Bruce Barlow, number two. For this guy, I knew I wanted something flaring out of the back of the head. And uh, I was in my anatomy class, and we were studying about bones. So I thought maybe a pelvic bone would look kind of neat. Number five, Chet Zar. Take your brain spoon and gently dip it in the skull. Come on now. Don't be afraid to take a nice hearty scoop. Put it in your mouth and chew thoroughly. Now, any cranial fluid left on the lips should be wiped off immediately. Continue these steps until the cerebral cortex is in view or until your appetite is satisfied. Eating brain should prove to be quite an enjoyable experience. Well, probably not, but wasn't it fun learning? Good night and bon appetit. Number six, Jim McLaughlin. Number seven, Brian Wade.
Number 11, Kent Jones. <laughs> met a famous theatrical mask maker whose na name was Benda. It's long since dead now. Benda made these gorgeous paper mache masks. And he told me that if a person puts on a mask and was not really thinking about, uh, about what his face is doing, that involuntarily his face will assume the expression of the mask. In other words, if you put on a happy mask, you're, you will smile. If you put on a sad mask, you'll look sad. And you will feel that way also. I do the sketches, I'm not too concerned whether they're that accurate as far as, you know, I've got a lot of extra lines and thought lines and scribbles on them, but I know that's the kind of look that I want, and then I'll go and do a second generation sketch of those that's more detailed and more refined and a little less um, jumbled with lines, and then I'll look at that and refer back and forth. And then, of course, you know, once you get into the 3D, things change that, from what was on paper. I think one of the hardest things to come up with is uh, originality. Because once you start a sculpture, it always ends up looking like uh, somebody else's work. So I really think uh, coming up with an original idea is probably the hardest part. And then you incorporate your skill in sculpting and, and mold making into the actual final piece. Well, sometimes it's hard to draw the line between whether you should use an appliance or a mask, or, or a mechanical head for that matter. Uh, I usually make that decision based upon many factors, not only just what I think creatively is going to give the best appearance aesthetically, uh, but also the practicality problems. For example, <laughs> uh, I, I did some work on a film recently called Rat Boy, and I, I did a couple different designs. One was with wider spaced eyes, more rat-like face. Uh, which couldn't be done as an appliance, because in an appliance you just glue it on a person's face and you need to use their eyes. Um, so I did this as a mechanical mask with a radio-controlled eye blink. Um, it was a neat design, but in this case, this film, uh, the person had to work for 50 days. That having a mechanical mask that, that the person had to look out of little, uh, little eyes that are spaced out like this was a torture device for a person to wear, and especially a person to wear for 50 days. I think it's, it should be a prerequisite to anybody who does make up effects that they should know what it's like to be inside of it. I mean, I grew up with this shit on my face. I, <laughs> I mean, I grew up gluing rubber on my face and putting stuff on, and, and I usually try to do a prototype version of whatever I'm doing to fit myself to see what it's like on the inside, because some poor actor has to wear this for, you know, for sometimes months.今回自分の顎でジョン動かすんですけどそれをするとアッパーリップが上がる仕組みになってます Sometimes just the mask is not enough if you have this bizarre head you should have a bizarre body to go with it so then we've got monster suits 
The next group of bizarre beings is the monster suit group. But brace yourselves, because from the pits of hell they come with these horrid and dreadful creatures. Oh, evil are you, beautiful undead thing, you. Why don't you assist these contestants on stage? May we have number one, Adam Hill. 